Okay, so in this module we're going to look at optimizing host based performance in Pro Tools. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the setup menu and choose Playback Engine. So the Playback Engine dialog will open and at the top here you're going to see the currently selected engine which for me is Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. which is one of the options that's available on the Mac. Um, so go ahead and pop that open and you'll see a whole range of options here uh, from AirPlay to the computer's built-in hardware, like built-in mic, built-in input-output. You'll also see some Bluetooth devices and the aggregate, as I mentioned before. Uh, if you have an Avid M-Box, for example, you would also see that as one of the options in here, and you could select that directly as the playback engine. Then onto the settings here, the first thing we're going to see is the hardware buffer size, and you can see mine's at 512, but there's a whole range here. I can go all the way down to 32 samples, which would be ideal for recording because it's going to give me the lowest possible throughput latency for monitoring. Uh, but that's not going to give me very good performance for my plugins. So when I'm editing, mixing, mastering, those kinds of things, I generally want to go to the highest settings, like 512, 1024, something like that. So those highest settings are going to give you the most processing power out of your computer. Speaking of processors, the next setting is the host processor number. So on my system I have eight cores available. They each show up as a discrete processor in here. Uh, general rule of thumb is to use half as many as you have available. That way you still have some headroom. If you start getting some CPU usage errors, you can crank that number up a little bit and uh, hopefully that will give you enough processing power to continue working. So then CPU usage limit is connected to that number of processors here. Uh, you'll see that mine's at 80%, which is a pretty good place to start. There's a huge range here, and you'll see that it goes all the way up to 99. Now the reason this goes to 99 is because the number of processors I have selected is something less than the maximum amount. Now if I go all the way up to 8, watch what happens here. The maximum I can go to is 90. Now the reason for that is, with all eight cores chosen, if I were able to go up to 99%, it wouldn't leave any processing power available for general system housekeeping, and uh, that would be a bad thing. So again, generally, I'm going to go to half as many here, and you could set this to maybe 80. That way you still have a little bit more room there. The next item you see is uh, the host engine setting. So I can ignore errors during playback and record if I want to. It's not generally a good idea. You want Pro Tools to report the errors that it's getting and stop the playback or stop the record pass. Um, and that way you can come into the playback engine here and make some changes, hopefully, that will allow you to continue working. But if it's, you know, the middle of the night and you just have to hit a deadline and you're getting a couple of errors but you think that you can power through it, you can go ahead and ignore those errors so that you can just get the job done. But you definitely got to watch out for pops and clicks when you do that. There's also an additional setting here to minimize IO latency even further. The next thing you see here is a delay compensation engine. There's a range of options here. Uh, short, which is 1,000 samples approximately. Long is 4,000. Maximum all the way up to 16,000, which is a, just a huge number. Now for most things, you're going to use that short setting. Uh, that should be enough for a typical collection of plugins on a track or that kind of thing. Um, if you need to, you could go to long. And then if you're really in a big mixing or mastering session, you might need to go to the maximum. Now what all of these settings are doing, they're looking at the processing latency on each track and they're calculating the number of samples. And then they use these delay compensation settings to keep everything phase coherent between tracks in the session. The next thing you see here is the disk playback cache size. Now in most systems, the only setting that's going to be available is this normal setting. Um, and all this is doing is determining the amount of RAM that's being used to buffer data from your hard drives before they actually uh, play back the audio in Pro Tools. The last thing you see here is the plugin streaming buffer, and you can see that this is set to level 2, which is the default. Now you're only going to see this in here at all if you have the Structure plugin installed. Structure is one of the Avid plugins. And so you can see level two, that's going to be okay for most things. If you are getting some plug-in streaming errors, then of course you could increase the number to a level four or a level eight. 
And then there's an additional optimization here uh, to optimize for streaming content on audio drives. Of course, that's going to require more system memory, but that, once again, will give you a little bit more power out of the system. So that's pretty much the playback engine. Again, just to quickly recap, the most important settings here would be the hardware buffer size. You want to go to the lowest setting when you're recording and the highest setting when you're editing, mixing, or mastering. The number of host processors, half the number available is a good starting point. That way you have a little bit of extra headroom here when you start getting CPU usage errors. And then the CPU usage limit, 80% is not a bad starting point. Again, it's always a good idea to leave a little bit of headroom there uh, when you start getting some errors. And that's pretty much it.